Okay, so Google launched a whole bunch of new devices today. I'm gonna to focus this video on the Pixel 4 and the Pixel 4 XL. These are their two new phones. I've been playing with them for a few hours and I thought to give some kind of early impressions on them. They're very cool. They have a lot of cool features, but I do have some reservations about them. Uh, I'm gonna focus this video just talking about some things that I really like about them and then talk about some kind of bigger picture stuff. The first thing, the most kind of important feature about these phones is definitely the 90 hertz screen. For a lot of people, this will be the first time they've seen a high refresh screen on a smartphone. So a lot of phones have had them, the OnePlus 7 Pro, the 7T, and a few other gaming phones, but this will be the first time we've seen a 90 hertz screen or just a high refresh screen available at just your local carrier store. To be able to walk in and to be able to see a demonstration of what 90 hertz looks like and I think that that feature alone is going to be able to differentiate this phone just visually from all the other phones that are at a lot of carrier stores. The rest of the kind of aesthetics and design of this phone feels a little less polished to me than I'd expect for an $800 device, like the design lines, the seams around everything, the relatively bigger forehead and chin, and the camera bump is just a straight up raised camera bump. There's no bevel or anything, it's just a bump that just goes straight up. So, for 2019, it's not the most elegant phone out there, but it's a reasonably nice looking phone overall. Now, Pixel phones are renowned for their cameras. They've always been known for excellent photography, and the few photos I've taken so far look really clean. It's got two lenses, a zoom, and a standard focal length. I'm surprised and just a little bit disappointed that they didn't go with a wide angle as the second lens, but that's Pixel for you. Okay, the front facing camera, it doesn't have, like last year's Pixel 3, you could adjust the focal length, you can kind of go for a wide angle selfie. This year's, it's fixed. It's like, uh, there's only one focal length, which is strange, I don't know why they just, I don't know why they opted out for it, but it's gone. I did like that. That was one of the nice features of Pixel 3's front facing camera. But the Pixel 4 does have a really cool feature this year. It's something that I feel like Android phones have lagged behind for a long time. It finally has real time processing in the viewfinder. So normally when you take a picture of something, like you'll pull up your camera, you'll shoot it, but if there's any kind of like HDR or any kind of adjustment that uses like night sight or any kind of computational photography that's happening in camera, it doesn't show it to the full extent on the viewfinder. So when I gave the Pixel 3 to my mom last year, she was taking photos and she was adjusting the exposure to try to match it to her eye, to what looked good to her eye, but then she would snap it and it would look different between the photo and what she saw on screen. And they finally did this thing where it now matches. What you're seeing on screen is what your photo is gonna look like. And I think that's a really nice update in the whole process and flow of how pixels handle photography. Okay, another feature they've talked about this event is the presence of these new radar sensors on the top of these phones. And when I saw the demo and the video short at the event, it looked really cool. It looked like something that we've seen before, like the LG G8 did something like that. And granted, this is day one, and knowing Google, they're gonna improve on this every chance they can. But in order for this technology to take off and in order for developers to actually make use of this sensor and this functionality, this has to be extremely reliable. So you can trust it to do what your hand gestures are telling it to do. Because the moment it skips once, like all it takes is just to miss once, and then you're thinking, why am I doing this? Why am I not just pressing it with my fingers? Because your fingers never miss. You hit that button, it skips to the next song every time. But I do think that this technology can become something really cool and really useful, but we just have to get reliability down first, and then I think we can build off of that. Okay, there are two things that concern me about the Pixel devices. The first is pricing. This, well, the small one starts at $799 with 64 gigs of RAM. The bigger one, the Pixel 4 XL, starts at $899, also with 64 gigs of RAM. These are expensive phones. And in a store, if a random consumer just goes into a store and is able to see all these phones and compare and contrast the pricing and what they offer, the feature that really sticks out is going to be that high refresh screen. I think that is the saving grace of the Pixel 4 devices because you can see that. It's a very obvious, visible difference between the Pixel devices and everything else at most carrier stores because most stores don't offer OnePlus phones. But in that pile exists an iPhone 11, a $700 phone that has a very comparable camera to what the Pixels offer this year. Another concern I have about these phones is the battery life, particularly the small Pixel 4. So this has a 2800 milliamp hour battery and that is a very small battery for 
a 90 hertz refresh screen. The screen does have adaptive tech in it to reduce the refresh rate when it's not in use, but battery life is something I'm definitely gonna take a closer look at in my more comprehensive review of them. Okay, Pixel 4, Pixel 4 XL. I think they brought some really cool stuff this year, but do you think, is it enough? At 800 bucks, is this what you would expect in the next generation Pixel? Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. I'll see you guys next time.